Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another macro struggle. Today we're going to finish up solving the sequential market equilibrium. This is part two. If you haven't a chance yet, make sure to check out both part one and the sequential market equilibrium setup. What we're going to do today is we're going to very briefly run through the results from part one. Then we are going to use those results and the infinite number of budget constraints in the sequential market equilibrium to solve for final allocations. And then we will be done. So let's go ahead and get into it. Timestamps are below. We know that in the sequential markets where we have borrowers and lenders and those assets, those one period assets are really kind of making this problem much different than just an error to root equilibrium where we decide all our trades in time zero and just follow through with those trades. In this world, we are trading every day and the only way to take a coconut from today into next week is to buy an asset for a coconut tomorrow every day for six days and take that coconut into next week. So we define the equilibrium, we took the first order conditions, we saw that Bill and Dave consumption smooth, they eat the same amount every day, and that gave us to the point that the prices are just equal to beta. Now we are going to use the budget constraints in order to solve for the final allocations. Now remember that we don't have just one budget constraint, we have T budget constraints. Everyone has a budget constraint in each period. So let's just start with the first one and let's just keep substituting into that budget constraint and let's see what we get. So here we have the first budget constraint, which is for Bill. It's just Bill's consumption in period zero plus the price in period zero times Bill's assets tomorrow. And that's equal to his endowment of two. But I know that Bill also has a budget constraint in period one. This is Bill's budget constraint in period one. I'm just going to solve that for A1. And as this arrow suggests, we're just going to plug that in for A1 here. And we're going to get this green budget constraint here. Now, if you haven't seen the pattern yet, what we're going to do, well, A2, we don't know what A2 is, but we can use the period two budget constraint, solve that for Bill's A2 or Bill's assets in time two and plug that back in and we will get a new budget constraint. So that's all I'm doing here. Feel free to pause if you wanna work this out yourself to make sure you understand what's happening. Let's go ahead and keep going. Okay, well now, shocker, I've got A3 here. I don't know what A3 is, but I can use my period three budget constraint to solve for A3 and plug that back in. So that's what I'm gonna do here. And I'm just gonna keep going because now I've got an expression with a four for Bill in it, and then I've got to use the next budget constraint to solve for that. And we are just going to keep going, keep going, keep going. But now let's look at this and see if we can find any sort of pattern. Well, I see here, this is C0, this is Q0, C1, this is Q0, Q1, C2, and this is Q0, C1, C2. So this is something like, well, I've got a sum, I've got beta to the T times C zero B because right, I know that this is the same as Bill's consumption in period zero. So this is like T equals zero to infinity. Okay, this is just a bunch of multiplication times my assets tomorrow. And this is just the sum of my endowment times the bunch of Bs or the bunch of prices. So I can turn this into this. And so this is exactly what we thought. We have this, which is also exactly what we thought. Now, what about this monster? What in the world are we going to do about this? Well, this is great because we have a no Ponzi game condition. So I know that my no Ponzi game condition says that this is always going to be greater than or equal to some big negative number A upper bar. I know that this is really equal to beta, which means that this is going to converge and further that this is going to a big fat zero. So I don't have to worry about that. And now I'm left with this thing, which looks a lot like the arrow de Brew budget constraint that we worked with before. And now I'm just gonna do that same math trick to say that C zero for Bill over one minus beta using the rule for infinite series where I took this C zero beta out. And the sum of this is just one over one minus beta. Same thing for the right-hand side. I'm doing that same math that we've seen before. I'm solving for Dave using that market clearing condition, knowing that the total number of coconuts in this economy is always equal to two. So if Bill is eating this number of coconuts, Dave is eating whatever is left. And this is the same allocation that we found in the era de Brew equilibrium. 
But notice that we also need to find out what the assets are. So what is actually being traded because that is part of the sequential market equilibrium. So what is happening? Well, I know that in even periods, if Bill is getting two coconuts, Dave is getting nothing. Whatever Dave is eating in even periods must be whatever he borrowed from Bill that day. So in the odd periods, Bill gives Dave, you know, two minus two over one plus beta, which is just two over one plus beta times beta, where this is the actual asset that's being traded. And this was the price of that asset that we saw for before. And then in the odd periods, Dave repays Bill that number of coconuts, which is two over one plus beta. So our final sequential market equilibrium is the allocation. And you see here where this right here is Bill. This is Bill's consumption. This is Bill's asset in time T plus one. We have Dave over here where this is his consumption in every period. This is his assets in T plus one given prices of beta. And now we're done. So hopefully these three videos on sequential markets give you a better idea of how to set up and solve a sequential markets equilibrium. If they did, make sure to like and subscribe and we will see you next time for another case of econ struggles.